Hello, this is T Chapman 500 with another Logisim video, and in this video I'm going to show you my brand new 16-bit CPU. Before we get into the CPU, I want you to notice these address mappers. These are so that I can connect multiple devices to the same data bus without having uh, to worry about conflicts between the two. Now for the CPU, you might notice that there are now 16 registers. We also have a couple of other registers displaying here, just so that I know the state of the processor. If we go into the CPU, there are six components here on the right, all of them registers, except for this one, and the control unit on the left. Now, because this is a 16-bit processor, it was actually a bit easier for me to implement various components than it was for the demo CPU. Um, one of the things about the demo CPU that I wish I hadn't done is this. This is 100% zoom and you might notice it's a bit difficult to read the CPU state unless you zoom in. With this CPU, however, you can easily read its state. Here's how the program counter in the demo CPU is implemented. And here's the same thing in my new 16-bit processor. So quite a bit simplified. Interrupt service system in my new processor versus my 8-bit processor. Now here's the register file for the 16-bit processor. This is basically the same thing we have with the demo CPU, except that CPU only has eight registers and R7 is the stack pointer. Here's the arithmetic logic unit and unlike the demo CPU which just forwards the opcode to the ALU, with this 16-bit processor I send signals out to the ALU and all of the decoding happens inside the control unit. And this arithmetic logic unit is capable of both signed and unsigned comparisons. That's right, the demo CPU resets the stepper once the instruction finishes executing. This new 16-bit CPU? Yeah, um, there's nothing on this reset line. Next we have the flags register. Pretty simple. In fact, for the demo CPU, it's basically the same thing. And for the immediate register, this is basically the temp register of the demo CPU, but I renamed it because this stores the byte that immediately follows the instruction. The temporary register of the demo CPU does the same thing, but I gave it a different name. Here's the immediate register versus the demo CPU's immediate register equivalent. Now, in the control unit, we have the instruction register, relatively simple. For the instruction decoder, we're using discrete logic gates and also a few multiplexers for optimization purposes to decode every single instruction on the processor. Next is the stepper. Now we're going to zoom out. This row of AND gates is what controls all of the instruction steps. So each step will have a different one of these outputs being a one. And depending on which output is a one, we get one or more signals that are activated. This block right here is for the arithmetic logic unit. Here's the jump control logic, and it doesn't check to see if there's a jump instruction given. It just checks the Y operand, which is the jump condition, with the flags register and generates a jump condition true if it matches the correct condition. This NAND gate up here is for arithmetic logic unit operations and it just makes sure that when we receive something that's not a compare instruction or a variant of the compare instruction that we write the data to the register file. But if it is a compare instruction then the output of this NAND gate becomes zero and the result of the operation is not written to the register file. Now, before I put this processor on GitHub, 
I have a lot of testing to do. I need to test every single instruction to make sure that it works correctly. And I found a few bugs just running this Fibonacci program. One, I accidentally had it so that the jump instruction tried to load the program counter from the immediate register without actually loading the immediate register. There was also an error when it came to the move instruction where I wanted to move the flags register to the register file. I forgot to activate the flag registers read enable signal. And then I found a, another problem in software that basically made it so that had I not had that error in the software in the first place, it might have been a while before I found that error with the move instruction. In spite of my best efforts, I made quite a few mistakes while wiring up all of the control signals. By the way, each instruction in this implementation of the processor takes four clock cycles, and the binary coded decimal converter, it takes 16 clock cycles to finish the conversion process which is a whole lot faster than you can do in software. Here's something interesting about some of the things I originally wanted to have inside this CPU. I originally wanted there to be a reset circuit, but reset circuits are expensive, and I really don't know how many logic blocks the CPU is going to use on my FPGA. So to keep things relatively simple, I just disabled the reset circuit, or actually I removed it completely. I also wanted the instructions to be pipelined, although it would be possible for me to make a pipeline version of the CPU. Instruction pipelines are expensive. I also wanted to have a floating point unit, a multiplier, and a divider working in parallel with the rest of the instructions. Well, the multiplier and divider at least on the integer side, would have been expensive on their own. The floating point unit would have been even more expensive. And to have the signals coordinating with each other so that no component stepped on any other components to cause signal conflicts, that probably would have been even more expensive. Yeah, I had quite a few ambitions and uh, decided not to implement any of those ambitions. So what we have here is our typical non-pipelined CPU, which still may or may not fit inside my FPGA, which by the way has 4,000 logic blocks. Oh, and also stuff like this component, which converts binary to BCD, as well as these address mappers, these also have to fit inside the FPGA. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will see you in the next video. This is T Chapman 500 signing off.